as some political parties and civil society organizations continue to mount pressure on President Muhammad Buhari to sign into law the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, the presidency has warned stakeholders to desist from playing cheap politics, saying the right thing will be done within the lawful time. The presidency, in a statement signed by the special advisor to president on media and publicity, Femi Adishina, said the president, Muhammad Buhari, has 30 days as prescribed by the constitution to act on the bill, adding that the executive still has time to do due diligence on it till March 1. Now, reacting to the agitations, the presidency said a proposed legislation has to do with the electoral fortunes of the country, or that the country needs to be thoroughly um, scrutinized and be made as near perfect as possible. Well, joining us to discuss this is Julio Logan. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, Barrister Logan, for joining us. Good evening. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. Um, so, uh, a lot of people are saying the agitation uh, of civil societies who are threatening to go on a protest and all those who are agitating for Mr. President to append his signature to these reworked um, Electoral Act Amendment Bill is much ado about nothing. Do you agree with that? You know, it's not a matter of trying to force the president to assent to the bill. When you follow the antecedents to this, the president himself has promised to leave a fantastic legacy when he is living office, particularly in the electoral sector of our national life. And there are several issues involved there. And recall that in 2018, towards the 2019 election, President Muhammad Buhari rejected the proposed amendments to the Electoral Act, you know, four times. You know, and he gave excuses then, ranging from irregularities, drafting issues, sequence of elections, the phrasing of words in parts of the clauses. And then eventually the 2019 election held without the amendment of the Electoral Act 2010. And here we are again. The amendment here was forwarded to the president earlier. And on the last day, because he is expected to ascend to it within 30 days, you know, he sent it back to the National Assembly complaining in particular about the recommendation of direct primary as the only option to prompt uh, flag bearers for parties. You know, and he said that may promote uh, corruption or, you know, engender insecurity and stuff like that. And the National Assembly went ahead again to amend, this time around, introducing newer clauses, for example, that if you are a political appointee and you want to contest, you must first resign your appointment before you go. Then talking about consensus candidates, so right now we have a proposed options, indirect primaries, direct primaries, or by consensus. Mm -hmm. And then again, the, there was an increase in how much the presidential candidate can spend. And this time around, the president has not assented to the bill. But I know that under sections 58 and sections 59 of the Nigerian Constitution 1919 as amended, the National Assembly and veto the president by proceeding through a two-third majority in the National Assembly to pass the bill into law if the president refuses again to assent to it. And INEC is now warning that this may affect the preparation for the 2023 election, but some of us do not quite agree with that. Even though the bill has not been passed into law, primaries of APC took place in Oshun State, you know, through direct approach. So we have the extant law that we can still engage to plan for the 2023 election. And President Muhammad Buhari should do everything possible to escape the, you know, the perception from the public that he is likely, you know, he may be interested in, 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 in scuttling the forthcoming elections, possibly, you know, different kinds of but, but, but then, but then I, I did have the INEC representative here yesterday, Mr. Festus Okoye, who was saying that, that, that INEC does, will not have to wait in any way because that bill has not been signed into law, but that INEC is going to go ahead with its plan for the 2023 elections as, as they're using the amended, uh, the 
um, Electoral Act as amended in, I think, 2010, he's saying that it doesn't matter. They will have to proceed as planned. But if this particular bill is signed into law, then, of course, they will proceed with this one. But it does not in any way stop them from um, conducting the elections with the, the Electoral Act that is available to them. He also proceeded to say that the INEC is not going to postpone the elections. He only said that they might, there might be a tweak in the date, but it's going to still happen within the time frame as specified by the Electoral Act. You know, by now, as a nation, I think we should have gone beyond this stage. If you ask someone now who the Chancellor of um, Germany is, the person is likely to mention Merkel, but she has left office as the new chancellor. Did the whole world know? Was that rank pause when the, the election took place? The answer is no, because you have an advanced democracy over there. That is the point we are making. Why should it be difficult? I mean, the president has assented to the petroleum industry, industry uh, bill, passing it into law. Hasn't that law even been suspended now because of subsidy debates? You know, so why don't you go ahead, pass this into law, score that goal first. Then if there are great areas that you need to attend to, why do we have the National Assembly? We have this Electoral Act of 2010 now being amended. Is there any rule that says it cannot be amended again? So rather than creating all the suspicions that we have, but having said all this, Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 has amended says that the National Assembly will make laws for the peace order and good governance of Nigeria. So if the National Assembly is persuaded that the amendments they have proposed are in the best interest of Nigerians, I think we have 109 senators, 360 House of uh, National Assembly, uh, House of Rest members there representing the people actively. Then you go ahead and veto him. Otherwise, then you may be telling us that you have gathered to propose these amendments in futility. Maybe you didn't do your homework very well. But before they proceeded on research, they promised to go and consult in their constituencies. And they came back to say they have consulted before representing this bill to the president. And the, pres it's not, the president is not the final boss stop for passing uh, the bill into law. So the, the Constitution envisaged the situation we have now and has given power to the National Assembly through two third majority of the National Assembly to veto the president himself if they believe that he is being malicious or he is he's not doing it in the best interest of the people because he he sought some amendments and those amendments have been made. But the, the, but the national back, but the national assembly has been put to this test twice, hoping that they would veto Mr. President, and it, it doesn't look like they have the uh, what it takes to do that. So why should we be depending on the national assembly? Why can't we just hope? that our president, the one we voted into office, would be able to do right by the electoral process that brought him into power. That is an indictment on the National Assembly. I intentionally mentioned the population now. We have just one president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, President Muhammad Buhari, and we have 109 senators, 360 House of Representatives members at the National Assembly. So are we now saying that they cannot represent us effectively? Or are they saying that they did not do effective consultations before coming out with this proposed amendment? And that is what we are saying. So if they come to the conclusion that the president is not acting in the interest of the people, then you go ahead and veto. But whether they have the willpower to veto is another discussion entirely, because the Senate president himself has promised the president that he's likely to dance along the tunes of the drama from the presidency. So, and Nigerians, in fact, have nicknamed this assembly as Robustam National Assembly. And they should not dance to the gallery, particularly when you realize that our electoral processes are very crucial in giving back to a good governance driven democracy, all right? Because it's not just this issue of direct primary or indirect or consensus. We have the issue of transmission of results by electronic device. We have the, the you know, the evaluation of candidates who want to vote. There are several other um, uh, clauses in, in, in that amend amendment that we've been told if the president this time around again refuses to sign 
the bill into law. But the National Assembly has the power to say, Mr. President, if you're failing to do what we expect you to do, we can go ahead. Because what sections uh, 58 and 59 proceed is that if the National Assembly goes ahead to veto the president, then the bill becomes law automatically. So the gates are open. They said they don't want to go through that gate. And, and what, and, and what if the National it, Assembly does not do this? Because, again, like you have said, it's your words, not mine, that um, they've been nicknamed a rubber stamp National Assembly. What if they don't? Like I said earlier on, they've been given two opportunities to test and see if they would go against the president, but they, they'd rather stuck to their guns and hopes that the president would do right. Uh, but going forward, the window um, of opportunity for Mr. President to append his signature to this is still open, of course. Um, but then let's move away from the president because we, we're hinging everything on this piece of paper and saying that this is how our elections should go or will go. But then there are other things that will make sure that the electoral process goes well. Um, of course, INEC, uh, the political parties. The, the guys who are running for these offices are security agencies. We have laws in this country that is supposedly uh, to set us on the straight and narrow. How much of those laws have we adhered to? Um, talk more of a new set of laws or rules and regulations guarding our elections. And I'm not trying to be in any way pessimistic, but I'm just, you know, realistically asking. You know, I, I have made reference to the fact that we still have the Estank law. The Electoral Act 2010 has not been abrogated. We are just trying to amend it. And if you cannot amend it, it will still fly as it is. It's just some key areas that should advance the fortunes of our electoral processes may not come into law. For example, the, the engagement of electronic devices, which would have helped extensively to prevent ballot snatching and reduce double Then. You, you know, several issues that like, 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 like that. But then, uh, just like many other promises that the president gave while coming to office, we are waiting to see if he's a man that will walk his, his talk mm. by precisely showing integrity. He was paraded and presented as a man of integrity. And there are several tests now, particularly in the area of security, in the area of improving the economy, and in the area of fighting corruption, and of course, in strengthening the uh, democratic uh, uh, structure mm. that we have in the country. And if he leaves office without fulfilling these promises, history will record that also against his regime. Once again, Mr. Logo, I'm sorry to cut in, and, and I don't want to sound prejudicial towards the president, but he's been here for, what, almost seven years. So... Is anything going to change in less than a year? Or, I mean, he's been here seven years. What, what has changed? What will change before Mr. President leaves? I mean, is there, is there going to be a stroke of a miracle? Is something going to happen for the president to change? Because if, he, if like you've said, all of the promises he, he made, none has necessarily been kept, what should we, why would, should we be hoping upon hope that something will change in this particular instance? It's up to the president. He's the pilot of the aircraft. So he is the presiding officer over this regime. So if he wants to be on the golden side of history, like he himself has stated at some point, why not? Or if he wants to go down in history as the leader of a regime that has recorded the highest level of indebtedness in the country with killings, with uncertainties, with inflation, so be it. You see, God. He has been given that opportunity, like you said. And I will close with this parable. A, a young man came to test a wise man and was holding a butterfly. And he asked the man, please tell me, sir, is this butterfly in my hand? Is he alive? And the wise man told him, it is up to you. If the wise man said it is not, the boy can crush the butterfly and present it as dead. And if the, you know, so what the man said is up to you. And lo and behold, when the boy opened his hand, in his hand, the butterfly flew away. So whatever the president intended to achieve in office, history has been quietly recording the characteristics of this regime. Mm. 
Mm. And let me disclose this. We arrest people, intimidate them, stop protests and everything, but you cannot arrest history. History mm. will document everything. And okay. if the expectations are not met now, it does not mean another regime will not come to meet expectations. All right. Paul Kagame has put that in Rwanda. We have. Well, yes. Mr. Logo, I'm sorry, we have to go. Unfortunately, time is uh, not on our side. Uh, Judo Logo is a legal practitioner. And uh, just as you said, Mr. Logo, let's uh, hope that Mr. President would want to end his career on the right side of history. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank you. God bless Nigeria. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. As we round up the conversation today, Nigerians have been reacting to the postponement of the All Progressive Congress National Convention. Well, this is where I wrap things up. I'm Mary Annika. We'll see you tomorrow talking for development. It makes no difference as, as long as I'm concerned. My thoughts towards them moving the dates from one month to the other. It makes no difference. The event is what is important. So uh, posting it does not make any difference. But if by March they have it done, it's an event. Let's see what will happen. And we are all, Nigerians are waiting. As a public viewer, I would just say that what I foresee, but in my own opinion, is that it's something within the party. And these are the things, this uh, internal, uh, uh, what they call it, crisis within the party. So I felt they have not put their house together. And, and if you look at it, there's some power shuttle within them. We are to go to North Seat or any of these very places. I think that's some of the reason why they have not been able to come together and put and have a good and have a date. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong in moving their version by postponing their convention because maybe they might not put what they're supposed to put properly in place. They have to put their room in order before going for convention. There are some issues within the fashions which they have to settle. Without that, there's no way convention can be successful. There's something fishy about it. Because of the intra-party differences, because of everybody wants to present himself as a candidate for the presidency. So I think that is the reason why they had to shift it to other dates, which I was also watching last time. The different factions, the Boni faction, the Tinubu faction, name it. Sorry for me calling names, but that is what I know that is going on now. So just because of the interparty differences, that is why they shifted it.